So as someone who publishes a lot around finance element modeling, especially on this channel, and also has written extensively both in my book and in other online discussions I've had around FEM, one of the things I think about a lot is what does the future of FEM actually look like? And so this is what I want to do with this video and a series of video under this series where I look at what the future holds for finite element modeling. If you're interested in this, sit back and relax as we get started with this video. My name is Dr. Michael Okreke. I'm a university professor within a UK university with a specialism around computational mechanics. So the first area that I think we need to focus on as we begin to think about the future of FEM is what I've described as a cloud-based FEM framework. As of today, most finite element modeling frameworks are based on some sort of desktop applications and you're harnessing the resources within a desktop application. In some instances, you may have a high performance computing where you submit your job to and then you generate your result on those sort of platforms. In fact, incidentally, this is how Abacus and ANSYS and most of these popular FEA tools have been developed over the years. However, what I see the future of FEM looking like is a case where you have cloud-based FEM framework. What I would imagine this would be is you have a cloud facility where finite element solutions, finite element models are running on the background and then you can just log into those applications, set up your model, run your application, harness the power of cloud-based computing and generate result, download that result back onto your local PC and then you get your result. This is very, relevant because quite a lot of application these days are all cloud-based so if you think about your netflix is cloud-based microsoft Word is cloud-based microsoft office is cloud-based recently i was looking at a customer relations management software a crm2 called hubspot these are all cloud-based applications so the major way we think about engaging with software is always cloud-based and so i would imagine that the futuristic finite element modeling frameworks would be based in some sort of cloud implementation. Sorry to interrupt your video. I just want to bring you two points. The first one is, please, if you haven't subscribed to this channel, please do subscribe. I really, really would like to have you as part of the member in this community of computational modeling, where we explore everything about computational modeling. So that when contents like this are made, you'll be the first to see it. Again, if you have ideas or videos you would like me to make along this whole philosophy of what this channel is about, please, again, do subscribe, do leave me a comment, and I will look at them and try and respond as much as possible. The second thing I want to let you know is that I'm building a live cohort masterclass. This is the very first that I've ever done on this channel, and it's something that people have requested quite a lot that I should help make videos to sort of teach them in more in-depth about computational modeling. Across the issues that I make on this channel, like RV modeling, like periodic boundary conditions, different designs, and a whole wide range of, of computational modeling issues. If you want to know about it, I have a dedicated wait, wait list for this, so please click on the link in the description section of this video where you get to be informed consistently about the progression of this live cohort masterclass about computational modeling. So thank you for your interest in doing those two things and let's get back to the video. What is the advantage of having a cloud-based system? I think one of the advantages here is that probably the cost of computational modeling will be a bit lower because at the moment, if you want to run an application in a desktop-based application, you need to then think about the getting the high quality computer, you know, getting a license, probably a one-off license or, a, you know, a, a recurrent license for that. However, if you're going to then deploy your model on a cloud application, it means that all you're really spending time on, on that cloud application is the time you spend to run and generate your result. So the cost of licensing will not be something you have to worry about. The cost of computing facility is not something you worry about. So just like every other application, it's really the time that you spend running the application, that will be the sort of time you will be concerned. And so that's one major advantage of having a cloud-based rendering. I also think that it sort of democratizes the use of FEM in the sense that most users can easily go on online, submit their job and run their jobs and commit to the time it spends, you know, generating their result. This is unlike what we see currently where you have to find out within your organization, within your university, do they have the software that you want? So I could imagine a 
cloud-based finance element framework organization where they could give you access to ANSYS, access to Comsol, access to Abacus, access to LS Diner. And all you do is, as you set up your model, you decide on which of these applications you want to run on those cloud offerings. And so instead of having to buy licenses for every one of these, you will then have to just rent spaces on those platforms. I mean, this is unlike what you have with Spotify, where different music systems, you know, different artists, you know, put their music. And all we do is we listen and we pay subscription service and that's sort of enough. So this kind of offering would be what a futuristic final element framework would be based. I would imagine it would be some sort of a cloud-based system. In terms of the disadvantage of such an offering, I think one of the issues that need to be sorted out is how you can take a traditionally desktop-based application and deploy them on the cloud. I think this is something that the providers of this software uh, solvers would have to think about. And I know that some of these organizations are actually working actively to create some sort of an online cloud-based offering. But in my opinion, they are not very effective because traditionally they were not created in that instance with that vision in mind. So this is something that has to happen. Microsoft has been able to do that, you know, transiting from a desktop-based Microsoft application to an online offering. And they've done an effective job in doing that. So you would imagine that this solver companies, these software companies will have to do the same in order to get an online system working for themselves. Another area where I think, you know, the future of finite element modeling is heading is a response to the prevalence and the usefulness of artificial intelligence. We certainly will need to think about what role artificial intelligence would have to play within the whole gamut of FEM frameworks, FEM platforms, FEM, you know, computations and what that looks like can be quite widespread and it's really an emerging area of research there's a lot of exciting work that i'm seeing in this field around expanding the virtual env environment for your analysis so currently if you want to do an fea model what you can do normally start off with is with the virtual environment you know what your geometry looks like and usually anything outside that geometry you often are not able to explore that broadly. So what I would imagine as a futuristic use of AI is having AI help you explore beyond the virtual domain for your analysis. That way, you know, you are able to look at all the edge effects that is influ influencing a current, you know, virtual domain assessment of your model. So that's one thing I would imagine will be important as we go into the future. The other aspect where AI is really, and machine learning is really important in finite element modeling is around the material, you know, material discovery and material uses. So there's a lot of work in which you're trying to train the material on how to make a prediction based on a you know, density of data, you know, and you're using machine learning and artificial intelligence to help with that. So, but those are just two immediate areas, I think, right away of how AI can be used. In further, you know, consideration of this video, we'll be looking at other aspects of what the future holds in terms of um, finite element modeling. So in the next video, we're going to look at two aspects again of what I think the future holds. The first one is what I call a hybridized finite element modeling framework. And the second aspect is the evolution of new materials and what that would do to the whole finite element modeling framework. If you're interested in, all, in that video, then look here and see that continuing video. Thank you for your interest in this channel and I'll see you in the next. Bye-bye.